our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE Conversation here in Palo Alto at the CUBE Studios. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We're here with two great guests, Carl Eschenbach, partner at Sequoia Capital on the board of Cohesity, as well as the CMO of Cohesity, Lynn Lucas. Lynn, great to see you. Carl, thanks for coming back on. Great, appreciate great it. Here. So Lynn, you know, we've been following you guys for many, many years, watching the rapid growth of Cohesity, funding round after funding round, unicorn, uh, from a smart startup to you know, going through the atmosphere, heading into orbit, nice growth. Mid-sized company, I would say now. Yeah, yeah. growing no like longer crazy. Startup. Yeah, <laughs> no longer yeah. startup. Yeah. Good, good round. Good financing track. Yeah. Thanks to Sequoia. Yeah, well, we're proud and uh, you know happy investors and partners of theirs. That's for sure. Uh, one of the things we're super excited about right now, Lynn. I want to get your thoughts on this. Is that how do you maintain the growth? Because you know, cloud is an ever-changing landscape. Data management's really hot and changing. What's been the success formula for you guys as staying ahead, both in terms of continuing to push the brand, push the message, and success? What's been the formula? Well, I think it starts with our founder, Moet Aaron, and his vision and strategy, which if you go back, he's been extraordinarily consistent on, and he saw this massive opportunity to take hyperconvergence, which of course he really is the father of from Nutanix, and bring it to this whole other area of data, the vast majority of data that enterprises have, that is in all of these different silos. And so, really, I think that Cohesity has this opportunity to be a once in a generation platform company, much like VMware, um, and really change the way enterprises protect, manage, store, and ultimately do more with their data. So I'm going to say it's less about the brand. I'm yeah. proud about the brand, but it's really about They did a great job with the brand, but I think the execution is, I think one thing I love about this market cloud and the next 10 years ahead of us is that you can come into the market with a feature or a specific thing like backup and turn it into a broad ranging, high growth billion dollars of, of value. I think that's what you guys are on. But I, while we have Carl here, I want to put him on the spot because you know, he was experience at, at VMware and now at Sequoia. What's he bringing to the table at, uh, for Cohesity? What's his operational knowledge? What are some of the things that Carl brought to Cohesity? Oh my gosh, what, what hasn't he brought? Well, Carl is obviously incredibly experienced um, and brings a wealth of go-to-market knowledge and connections and advice for us. I think instrumental in helping us see how to scale um, as well as change and shift the business model over to software and subscription, which is what Cohesity did last year and is right in line with the move towards the cloud. Yeah. Carl, I your thoughts? I would say one of the things, just to echo, so thank you for those kind words, but quite frankly, it's all about execution and these, these folks at Cohesity know how to execute. If you just look at their scale over the last three years and their ability to execute, um, it's pretty impressive, not on the technology side only, but if you think about their go-to-market motion and what they've done both here in the, in the US, internationally, all, all over into you know, Asia and in Japan with the joint venture they have with SoftBank and some of the others, it's been amazing to watch them scale on the go-to-market. And also the ecosystem that they started to build around them and leveraging partners like HPE and Cisco as, as Cohesity has transitioned from being an appliance uh, solution to being a software and data management platform and moving the, the hardware to other partners, it's been amazing to watch that transformation happen. So it's yeah. technology, yes, but it's also every other component and piece of, of the business that's been able to scale through good execution. Well, let's talk about the ecosystem, because I think it's a super important. It's an ever-changing conversation, as, especially as the, the bigger players get bigger and then the mid-sized folks like you guys get bigger as well. Uh, the relationships change. You've certainly seen your share, Carl, at VMware, at VMworld every year, the ecosystem has its growth, it changes over, new value propositions are coming in. You have a constant rotation through of ecosystem dynamics. Mm. Yeah, no What are no some doubt. of them going on now that Cohesity's taking advantage of? What are, what are they paying yeah, attention so, to? So because Cohesity is actually building a true platform as, as Lynn was articulating, if you're a platform in a data center, it means two things. You have to partner with people on the southbound side of the platform and the northbound side of the platform because everything's going to go through a platform. And because of that, you form a very rich ecosystem, but you also form sometimes competitors. In this world, everyone I think describes it as friends and enemies, they're frenemies. And they've done a very good job at that, but at the same time, 
they've really focused on key partners like an HPE or a Cisco or many others that can really differentiate themselves and allow them to focus on what, they're, what they truly are, and that's a, a data management software company. Um, so I think they've done a really good job navigating the ecosystem and building off of it and aligning with the right people. For example, you sit here at VMworld today, um, look at the partnership they have with VMware. They have V-ready you know, certification across vSAN, their infrastructure platform, vCloud Director, AWS, you name it. So I think they've done a great job and that's thanks to people like Lynn and the team. Lynn, talk about the, the ecosystem uh, dynamic because you guys are actively marketed a big booth every year at VMworld as well as Amazon reInvent other shows. You have to be out there. What are you hearing? What are some of the dynamics that you're, you're working through? Well, speaking of uh, VMworld and VMware, they really were the original ecosystem partner and, and I think we believe that north of 70% of our customers are VMware customers and they're getting better value out of that. But we haven't talked a lot about the cloud and that's obviously a massive ecosystem that's continuing to develop and bringing those two things together is something that Cohesity specializes in with our native capabilities with Amazon, Azure, Google. Um, but the other third piece of the ecosystem that we're now developing is the applications. And that's unique to Cohesity really redefining data management. Um, just announced uh, Cohesity CyberScan based on Tenable running on the Cohesity platform. Prior to that, uh, Splunk running on the platform. So we're developing these ecosystem partnerships in new ways with application providers. So when are we going to see Cohesity World? <laughs> I am just so happy to be at VMworld. It, it's a great place for us to meet a lot of customers and partners. So we'll, we'll Carl, stay with Carl, you were talking that. about, before we came on camera, about your first VMworld, um, and you go, oh my God, it's huge, and now it's even bigger. This is the opportunity for companies like Cohesity. If they continue the momentum, yeah. building out applications, which if you think about it, that's an enabling uh, and technology, yeah. you can enable developers to be successful. There's, that yeah. truly is a testament to what a true platform is. Yeah, again, I think, you know, she said they don't have a big user conference yet. I don't think it'll be long before we have such momentum in the market that we will have a user conference at some point where you will see a large turnout of people using the technology, people from the ecosystem there, and then developers as well. And lastly, you'll start to see application vendors like a Splunk or a Tenable who are actually now running their applications on top of this. This isn't just data management, but it's also supporting applications. And when you pull those three different you know, constituents together, you have a pretty big uh, opportunity to pull off some type of a platform show. Lynn, I got to put you on the spot here for a minute. You got Carl, he's also a partner at Sequoia Venture Capital. What are the pros and cons of working with a big time tier one renowned VC like Sequoia? I mean, Sequoia's, I mean, Don Valentin's well documented story. Moritz goes on and on. They got the young guns in there now. You got the operating experience from like the Carls. They're pretty established. They've got a great business model, you know that. What's the pros and cons of working with a big time Sequoia? I've not seen any cons. Uh, pros are, as you said, the operating experience, and I think also the experience in guiding a company through this hyper growth. Cohesity is now well over 1,200 employees. Last year when you and I sat here, much less than that, right? And they've seen it and done it before with other partners or with other portfolio companies. That. I think is one of the best pieces of advice as Carl has given us uh, coming into our company is how to maintain that culture and that focus on the mission as we move through this tremendous growth phase. So it's interesting, Sequoia loves you when you're growing, but, and, but they, they've seen success, so the, the cons haven't come yet, but if you continue to grow, there'll be no cons. and Everyone's happy growing, but I, I want to get your thoughts because Sequoia also builds world-class companies and they also got yeah. them in Apple. The names are, are legendary. Yeah. Your founder on theCUBE told me that he doesn't want to just get an exit. He wants to build a world-class company. That's well, correct. exit is not as important, not like an M&A, but going yeah. public, that happens. But he's not in it for the, no. for the no, cash. He, he, he wants to build a durable, dur world-class company. That, that's exactly right, right? Moet has had a, a number of successes, Google, Nutanix, so he's not in this for the short return. And we really are focused on building a culture and a set of values and a long-term sustainable business. And he really means what he says about, he's here to change yeah. the world. Um, and data is the foundation of what most businesses are going to compete on. And he believes he can really empower organizations to do that. And we can build a great culture and a great company while we're helping. Carl, when you hear and that. I want to piggyback off what Lynn just said. And it's exactly what 
Lynn articulated about Moa to build, to, wants to build a big enduring company that stands the test of time. If you look at our ethos at, at Sequoia, we want to partner with founders from idea to IPO and beyond. We're not looking for a quick hit, a quick you know, win. We want to be with them through IPO and beyond and build big legendary companies to stand the test of time. And in the form of Cohesity, we have that opportunity and we're well on that path to build a legendary platform company that will service both the enterprise and the cloud companies into the future. That's our mission, so I think our missions are aligned. Well, you just answered my, my question I was going to ask you. That is music to your ears. This is the kind of model that you guys want. Now, certainly you guys do a good job of exiting out on M&A and doing, making your LPs a lot of money. Yeah, at and some point not, we got to pay gotta our LPs money. back, right? <laughs> but you know, a lot of people think when, you know, when our companies go you know, public, uh, this is an exit for us, it's just an event. And if we believe in the companies, we're going to hold them long into the public market from that idea and that seed investment like we did here at Cohesity, well beyond the IPO. There's a renaissance going on, and I love it because two things are happening in this next 10 years. You're seeing the, a systems platform mindset come back versus the quick hits. And also, people want to build big companies. They don't want to just do the quick flips anymore. So a lot of young entrepreneurs, are they're in it for a mission. This is a new vibe. What kind of uh, advice do you give entrepreneurs that are looking to bring that cohesity model and, and get the attention of Sequoia? Uh, yeah. What are some of the things that you see as success for those young entrepreneurs out there? Yeah, so it, it is around the word mission. Like we want to partner with people that are mission driven, that are going to have a huge impact on business and society as a whole, and even you know, the social efforts in our world. So we're looking for people that want to change the trajectory of whatever it is they're addressing and we think, for example, with Cohesity, there's a radical transformation taking place in, in the infrastructure um, and someone's got to innovate because a lot of innovators today are not coming from the incumbents, it's coming from the next generation of founders like yeah. Mohit. And he's very mission driven. Build a big company, service a community of people, change the way people store and think about data uh, and manage it. and, and that, that mission-centric founder is one we love to partner with. Final question, I'd love to get both your take on this question, uh, Lynn and Carl, is if you, when you meet someone that may not be in, in the, inside the ropes of technology like the enterprise tech, like we are in the Cube and, and others, and they ask you the question, why is Cohesity so successful? How, would you, how do you describe the dynamics of the marketplace and Cohesity's role in it on its success? What's the, what is the answer to that question? I think it's really two things. So one is I think that there is this generational shift in the architecture that underpins data and we've got a perfect storm with data doing the, uh, exponential growth and as Carl's been saying, there really hasn't been a lot of innovation in the infrastructure in more than a decade. Moet saw that, but then that's combined with a mission, a passion for customers, and sticking to that execution of serving the customer, and that's making us successful. Carl, your thoughts to add to that? Listen, it starts with technology, and to have great technology, you have to have a great technical founder, and we have that in Mohead time and time again. I can go, we've all talked about Mohead and how special he is. At the same time, you need to build a company that has a special culture, that can stand the test of time, that is resilient, that has grit, and has passion and perseverance for what they're doing around their mission. And I think we have all of that in Cohesity, and that's uh, a lot of it's because of Mohid and people like Lynn that he's brought in around his executive team, and you can just see that permeate through the entire organization. That's awesome, thanks for sharing the insight. Carl, great to have you comment here with Lynn on great Cohesity. To be back. I know you're on the board. A lot of great things happen. Looking to see what's happening at the VMware parties. Thanks for hosting some awesome events for the community, Lynn. Can't wait, can't wait to be back, bring some of our customers right. on. Thanks for spending time. This is theCUBE conversation here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.